Welcome to another video where I'm sitting here contemplating some of my life's decisions. Uh, but we've got this old Ford Ranchero and it has really piqued my interest. Do you, you may remember it from a previous video where I showed it and these weeds weren't so, so high up like this. But it's got a 4x4 kit conversion under it, so maybe it's a, a truck frame, I'm not sure. Manual transmission and it seems to be all complete. Some damage occurred, maybe something fell on it or was in an accident. It's like, uh, like somebody started doing a custom dash on it. I believe it's got a, a Cleveland motor in it, but I don't know for sure. I didn't do any research. I don't have any information on this either. So we're just kind of gonna clean some of these weeds out, dive in, see if we can get rolling, maybe get it on out of here. I'm not married to this one, but you know, let's, uh, let's see what she needs. That's a little bit more like it. And now we can see the true potential of what sits before us. We'll start with the walk around tour. You guys can kind of make your own decisions on, uh, you know, leave some comments down below if you notice anything. No tire on the right rear. Don't know how these gates open. So on the inside, oh, that needs a little lube on the hinges, but still, still kind of functions. Okay, it ripped off on this side for me doing that. It's, uh, I don't know how long this has been sitting, but as you look around and we see piles of rust in certain areas, you can tell it's not, we oh, just caught a lip on a piece of rust there. It's great. Uh, kind of gives you an idea how long it's been sitting when you, when you do a walk around tour. Missing the gas cap, but that's not tilted up. It's horizontal, so that's, that's a good thing. Only tire we do have is flat. Uh, it's a LT 235 8516. Definitely some heavy duty truck leaf suspension with additional little pogo shocks on there. Gas tank is intact. I can't imagine how bad this would have looked if it sat here for another few weeks. <laughs> and these, these swamp plants grow so fast, it's insane. Guess what we'll go underneath in a minute. Keep, keep going around. I suppose it probably was an off-road accident is kind of what it's looking like with that damage and maybe a tree went through the windshield. Um, let's look at the front axle. No brake pads at all. The brake pads are completely gone uh, on the one side. And the pistons are pushed all the way out. Got a dual piston caliper. Uh, those are the homemade body mounts. Ooh, it's, it's looking pretty sketch the way this was done. Uh, geez, I remember this looking a little bit nicer. I don't know. <laughs> Front end's tight looking though. Woo! Look at that. I was never a huge fan of the quad rectangle headlights, but you know, oh, this side's sunken real good too. We might just have to drag this out because we're pushed up against uh, some stuff too. Let's on this side, push these. Oh, just lean back into it. Talk about pollen, there, I, I believe this is pollen floating all, all around and I'm not usually allergic to stuff, but it is just killing my eyes. Oh, heck at that. Doesn't smell bad, but it kind of just smells like a swamp in here. Window still goes down. Leave that a crack. Look at this custom dash that somebody did. This is a uh, heavy gauge too. Cut out for the stereo. Somebody built this car. If it was you, you know, and you're still around, let me know. Drop some comments down below, it'd be cool. Custom made shifter on there. Got a piece of a half inch MPT and it shifts. That's in neutral, all right. This is the manual transfer case. No shifting so far, but that's okay. Uh, and there you go, never got around to putting the, the gauges back in. Seatbelts still work. Yeah, they do. Yeah, the rear is sunk in. The driver door. Oh, it does. The driver door opens. Not all the way though, because the body damage. Whew, yeah, that's uh, that's ugly looking. Looks like some parts were taken out of it too. But overall, pretty complete car. It's in not half bad shape. Let's take a gander under the hood. 
I mean, what are we even doing, guys? This is like, this thing's in bad shape. Red, it's empty and really corroded looking. I don't know if you can see that. Got some stuff growing. That's, that's probably one of the more corroded reds I've seen. Holly four barrel on it with seized up linkage. You know, and kind of hit all this stuff with PB while we're at it. And yeah, this does look like a Cleveland to me. N instead of a, a Windsor, it's got an Elderbrock intake on it, super stock wires. Ignition coils is kind of dangling in the wind. Power steering actually has something on the bottom of the stick. Motor oil is up to level and really not that dirty looking. Ooh. <laughs> so that's, that's usually a good indicator of how long something's set too. I'm gonna go with, I don't know, 20 years. Got a 24 mil socket on the crank. Let's see if she's locked up or not. I know you guys are screaming right now. Pull the plugs and lube the cylinders. You're gonna scratch the wall. I don't care. Oh, yeah, she is locked up. How about that? Yeah, I'm just tightening the crank bolt. Well, that means we'll pull the plugs out. I did get a late start, but probably have at least another hour or so. Oh, jeez. It had Autolite 25s, and they all look in good condition except uh, the one that came out of cylinder number three. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Should be on this small block for it. The number three and number eight came out a little rusty. So we'll, we'll spray some lube down those cylinders now. The rust in this engine will hopefully be no match for PB Blaster, which you guys already know this channel is sponsored by Blaster. Uh, so a huge shout out to them because they've been supplying me with all the chemicals I need. Lately doing the diesels, been using a ton of starting fluid. And I especially love their new cans. My favorite feature is that it locks out. So every time you're done using it, you just lock this out to the left and then you can't mistakenly, you know, lean over in your truck and, and hit it, boom, like that. I mean, I wish kind of all, all cans had that shut off. Of course, should have the cap on that one. But once you flip this over, you have adjustable flow. So if you go all the way to the right, boom, you have a nice wide spray. You're like, oh, that's too much. You can go to the middle and then you have a little, a little spray. Now, if we want to hit these cylinders, boom, we just flip out our straw. I'm going to go ahead and put it on full spray. And it's just, this is my favorite penetrating fluid. So. I've been using them for years. Like I can, I can jam this right down in here, hook my finger on here, and I can give that cylinder a nice big shot of PB Blast. We'll let it sit. I'm gonna hit each cylinder like that. And yeah, just like I said, huge thank you to Blaster for sponsoring the channel. By far my favorite penetrating fluid, and I just love the way it smells, the way it works, everything about it. Turn it up or turn it down. Made in USA. Heck yeah. Here we are. Just hit all eight cylinders. We'll let that sit. And I think what we do, maybe we'll go try and find some wheels for this. The frame on this is actually in really nice condition. If anybody knows what it is, feel free to drop a comment down below. And also, if you know what that transmission is, feel free to drop that down below too. Uh, a little, little freeze plug leakage here. That's okay, it's still intact though. What is this? Oh my gosh. You came on the scooter with Gus? What's up, buddy? <laughs> what are you doing? You can't be running around here. How's it going? It's going good. I mean, kind of. <laughs> I'm about to go look for some, some wheels for this thing. I guess we can let you run around, but you better not go stepping on any rusty metal, buddy. Come on, Gus. Come on. <laughs> he can barely make it through these weeds. Those tiny little wiener legs. Jump through. Good boy. Oh, look at his new trick. Good boy. He's such a good boy, yeah. I did notice behind the seat. Look at that. There's another compartment there. And a spare tire. And it's a five lug spare. This Econo line's got some eight lugs on there. Oh, look at that. Three wheels sitting in here. Oh geez, and a sweet Miller welder. Oh,
fish down here. PBG. Looks like he's got a Facebook and a YouTube channel and Instagram. I'll have to check him out. Probably should have hit the calipers a few times with a hammer first, huh? Yeah, what are you gonna do? There it is, now she's sitting as designed. The most sketchiest ride ever. I'm sure it's a speed wobble death trap. Probably worse than the, the Tonka truck was too. But yeah. That PB's been soaking the cylinders a while. Let's see what we got. Plenty of room to work onto this thing now. That's still nothing for rotating it. I think we'll probably let that set overnight, maybe even a day or two. And if the PB doesn't do it, then we'll have to break out some vinegar or something a little bit more powerful. Oh yeah. Everything except for the right front is rotating. Well, that was fun, but we're gonna try a better idea. I'm gonna hand the camera over to Jen and try out this KQ Kinetic Recovery Rope. This is a 30 foot. I'll drop a link to it on uh, Amazon if you guys haven't heard of Kinetic Recovery Ropes before. They're pretty awesome. So we'll try just dragging this thing backwards with the Tundra, even though it's probably a little bit heavier than the Tundra, but let's give it a go. Got it rigged up with a soft tie. Oh, watch a little guys. They were all spinning, but those... They're, these two are spinning opposite directions, yeah. right? Yeah. But was that spinning then? It was spinning this way, yeah. Oh, but this was spinning the opposite way? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the motor did not unlock itself in fourth gear. Look at that Ranchero. This could be your new car. Yeah, I need a new car. Got some, some Winston Light 100s. It could be down here somewhere, I don't know. I love this carpet. I just put like some regular old carpet in there. Uh, felt like it dis disengaged. That should pop out of gear now. The clutch disengaged. No. Could have been the fork though. Well, guys, two days later, I'm back over here. Got underneath with the breaker bar again. Engine still locked up no matter how hard I crank it. And I used the blow wand, flew into each cylinder. Uh, yeah, a lot more crud was coming up before, but as I do that, it's just like rusty, sandy nastiness coming out of these cylinders. So we, we probably should have bore scoped these originally, but I didn't have that with me um, when we were here the first day. But I think it's safe to say these cylinders are, at least a few of them are in really bad shape. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this here longer, as long as I can, and we'll check back see if any magic takes place. We could try vinegar or blaster metal rescue, but you know what? I'm gonna just shoot some more PB blast in there for now, give it a couple more days and see if that does anything for us. We're back over here. Let's see if the PB blast has helped out the engine, if it's still locked up or not. It's had a good amount of time to, to soak in. Of course, this engine could be seized up from other reasons too, like uh, maybe it got overheated and spun a rod bearing or something. It might not even be rusted cylinders, but let's give her a go. Oh no, she's still locked. Let's bore scope the cylinders, see what they look like before we go shooting anything else in there. We'll start over on the passenger side, cylinder number one. Drop it in. All right, yeah, we're looking pretty nice. Look at that cylinder, nice cross hatch pattern on there. Spin this around, a little bit of rust on the back, but that looks great. Number two, oh, pistons right at the top on number two. We'll just skip that one. Number three, ooh, all right, so this this one's got rust. Pretty, pretty bad. Uh, there's a look at one of the valves, but not super pitted. 
Let's go to number four. Probably should have done this before, really, but uh, what are you gonna do? Oh, all right, so number four is not pretty. I believe that's a cylinder wall right there you're looking at. And yeah, that one had a lot of water in it and it's really, really bad condition. We're now several weeks later and let me fill you in on the progress with the Ranchero. Now, unfortunately, the blaster didn't do the trick. As you saw, that was super heavy rust in there. Uh, so what I did is use some of the, the blaster metal rescue. If you guys had seen in previous videos, like on Think Airboat Part 2, we used that. That, that just works wonders on heavy rust. Uh, even better than vinegar. I did. A, I tested the two of them. Uh, poured that in the, the troublesome cylinders, ate away the rust. Still could not get those pistons to turn. I even... Uh, poured some diesel in there as well, and I, I went back probably, geez, I don't know, eight times checking this thing, and the motor is still locked up. So I am ready to throw the towel in on this one. However, if one of you guys are interested in this Ranchero, they only want $650 for it, which is, it's not that much, and this motor does still have potential. You probably just take the heads off, uh, score, you know, scrape off some of that, that rust with maybe a ball hone or sandpaper and then tap each of the pistons using a cedar 2x4 and a hammer and get them uh, broken loose. And I think that motor would run again. We'll probably smoke, but you know, it, it'll run. And this could be a really fun farm truck for somebody. So 650 bucks is all I want. And I'm not trying to make any money on it. I'll even offer free delivery within one hour of Trent, New Jersey. I'll put that on my trailer and deliver it to you. If you have the means and time to to pull that motor and do something with it. Even if you just want it for parts, whatever the case. I'd love to see something done with it instead of being crushed. And I don't know, just, just picture yourself cruising that thing around town. Uh, there's no title, but you know, just plate slap it. You'll be, you'll be all right. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much where we're gonna end this. Unfortunately, you can't save them all. And I sometimes I like to just get my toes wet, feet wet maybe, but maybe not go you know, knee, knee deep in there and, and indulge uh, in a massive project on, on something like that. Thought about throwing this on the secondary channel, no nonsense, no how RRM, uh, since it's not complete, but I figure include successes and failures. If you guys got any feedback on that, feel free to let me know. We'd be curious. And I was kidding about finding that PBG hat under there. If you haven't seen Pole Barn Garage already, check him out. Uh, super cool guy. Dalton is the man. And we got uh, the opportunity to meet him on the Gran Torino Elite Trip. Future video coming on that too. If you are interested in buying the Ranchero, shoot me an email. That can be found in the About section of my channel page up top if you're on a desktop or under the same handle, handle on uh, Facebook and Instagram. No nonsense, no how. And that'll wrap this video up. I thank you very much for tuning in. If you did watch this far thanks so much for all the support guys and i will hopefully see you in a future video no nonsense no how over out but wait there's more for you guys that stuck around to the end doing a little giveaway on this gulu gt 4000s jump starter limited edition freedom edition they are releasing 999 of these on uh, July 3rd. So the sale goes for, I think, two or three days. And I'll drop a link to it down below if you want to check it out. They're going to be $140. Uh, I've seen these retail anywhere, the, the normal non-Freedom Edition, uh, anywhere from like 280 to 180 on Amazon. They fluctuate. But you've seen, if you see my other channel, I've done, I did a review video on this, jump-started my RAM with zero batteries. <laughs> So this thing's capable of starting a 5.9 diesel cold start. You know, it wasn't like freezing cold, but pretty strong little jump pack. Not really designed to do that, but you can, this'll, this'll get you out of a jam big time. You can use it as a battery bank too. Comes with some different adapters, your charger and uh, USB-C cable. Gonna get it new in the box. And here's how you enter. Let's see, we'll keep it real simple. Uh, just leave a comment down below. Generic comment, do not. Uh, write generic comment like some of you guys do, but don't mention the Gulu because then there's going to be more people that enter and you guys have less of a chance of winning. So just leave a comment and then after seven days, this video has video's been out for yeah, five to seven days, I will comment back, live free. And the code word back to me that you have to comment back is or die. So live free or die, New Hampshire state slogan and love that and words to live by. And uh, yeah, I'll send this out to you. The only thing is USA only guys. Uh, it's with the lithium batteries and everything. I, I the, the overseas shipping gets expensive and then weird with, with battery stuff. So USA only. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So hopefully I covered all the angles there. Not the world's hugest giveaway, but it's something. So good luck in winning and enjoy your weekend of freedom. I'll see you next time.